comes to address your whys this morning, see? And we live with these whys, and we live with these regrets, and we live with these frustrations, and we try to mask it over, and we try to cover it up, but God wants to make available unto you this morning a healing aspect that you have not taken advantage of, and the reason why you need it is so he can ask the, answer the question of your why. The Bible declares that Jesus had a why. He even sat upon the cross and said, why have I been forsaken? Not by people, not my mother. No, no, no. We don't even know what happened to Joseph. I mean, it don't even recall where he disappeared to. But it was only Mary that showed up at the cross and God himself, wrapped in flesh, had the audacity to say, God, why have thou forsaken me? When you mature to a place and you finally have that meeting, that intervention, that more povish type of conversation that says, I don't understand what happened, but the only thing I want to know is, are you my father? And if you are my father, why weren't you there? I had cheerleading. I had basketball games. I walked across stages. I did all these marvelous things. And when I looked out into the crowd of August people and I saw all these people clapping, all these people charading, everybody taking pictures, it was absent of the person that I really wanted to be there. And it was a father. I'm just trying to figure out the why. I understand you might not have the money, but at that point in time in my life, five, ten years old, it wasn't about the money. I understand that you might not have a car, but it made no difference. You could have picked up the phone and dialed some digits, and it would have been just fine. I need my why answer. Because of this fad of spiritual fathers, we run the church, and we try to adjust our lives. And commit and submit ourselves to a person that we don't have no single solitary clue of how to properly love. Because we did not have it in our life. And we only give you 20, 30 minutes on a weekly basis to adjust our perspective to a place to accept the love from a real father. And I'm going to tell you something. When you love a person and your heart is attached to their future, you're going to be hurt because of their deficiencies. Y'all ain't going to say amen to that. And it's A-OK. -okay. But you're going to be hurt because of their voids. You're going to be hurt because of their deficiencies. Yes, it's good. Thank you for the cards. And thank you for the gifts. But at a lot of times in your walk, it will be the frustration that another man did or the absence of another woman that they will take out on you and you're going to have to embrace it because real fathers know how to absorb the pain of sons and daughters and as God is shaping your life to be something that you've never been before, sometimes you're going to have to be a sponge and be able to absorb and see that's why Jesus said on that cross and said why have thou forsaken me? Where are you right now? God had to turn his back on his only son because Jesus became a sponge on that cross and he sat there and absorbed the sins of you and the sins of mine and the sins of my children and the sins of your children and God couldn't even look at his son and gave, gave his eyes upon him even God had to honor the principle of turning his back on sin but as soon as Jesus turned his life over to God God says I'm going to honor my word and give them access to a place that sin pushed them away from reason why Jesus had a why? Because he realized he was carrying something that was bigger than his own. He was carrying something that was bigger than him. He absorbed and picked up a weight that didn't even uh, belong to him. It wasn't even his responsibility. And we take advantage of it because we sin daily. And he said, I died for that. I died for that thought. I died for that behavior. My blood was shed for this and that every time that you have an opportunity to consider how sinful you really are, a tear should fall down your face. You ought to be able to pull your car over and repent and say, God, I thank you for the many times that my sin pushed me away from you. That because of what Christ did on the cross, because he came and he died and he was resurrected, I now have access to you. See, you can only be arrogant and prideful for a little bit of time. But sooner or later, God's going to humble you and show you that if it had not been for Christ dying on the cross, if it had not been for the blood 
blood of Jesus, if it had not been for his resurrection, you wouldn't have available opportunities and a second chance. But you need to thank God this morning that the Father is attentive to your future and he's given you a second chance and a new lease on life. I don't care where you've been. I don't care if you've been locked up. I don't care if you've been in the insane asylum. What comes to light is that Jesus died for it all. In his bloodshed, we're redeemed and restore you to a place that you can cry out, Abba Father. I feel like preaching. I said, Abba Father, bring me closer into your presence. Bring me closer into your love. I have been far out and distant long enough with a loud voice this morning. I'm looking for my daddy. The reason why the veil had to be rent from top to bottom, and I'm almost done, is because the weight and responsibility of redemption yearly, annually, was on the high priest. And God said, as a father, I want my sons and my daughters to come to me. There is no other belief system. I will stand and contest against Buddhists, against Islam, against any other religion to be able to testify that the God that I serve took on an attribute as a father. And he gave me not just access to him to come, but he gave me the ability to receive him in my heart. And because I now receive him in my heart, there's no other religion where the God actually lives in their subjects. Y'all, y'all missing that today, and you take for granted what you got access to. You take for granted and won't even reverend what's on your life. If he was not inside of you, that last drink should have took you up, up out of here. If he was not inside of you, you should have got hit by that car. But he wasn't just protecting you. He was protecting himself inside of you. And if the guiding hand of the Father was not there inside of you, you should have been in jail right now. You need to thank God that he protect you in the midst of the darkness, in the problems and issues of your life, when it was self-sabotaging, when you shot yourself in the foot, when you wanted to throw it all in, when suicide was an option. You need to thank God that he preserved you and protected you and gave you access to come into a place of redemption. You won't say amen, but you need to open your mouth and thank the Lord. You need to reverence him this morning because God the Father is redeeming and giving you back Back your time. He's redeeming you and giving you back your strength. Some of you lost your way. Some of you have fell to the wayside. Some of you have been backslidden. But God loves you just the same. And he wants to redeem you. He wants to love you. He wants to restore you. He wants to raise you up. He says that once there was a time that your sin pushed you away from me. And it pushed me away from you. But not only am I now available, but you have access to my grace. You have access to my mercy. You have access says to my healing, open your mouth today and use your praise as a weapon to say, God, I'm going to stand and fight for what's rightful in mine. I want my joy back. I want my peace back. I want my life back. Open your mouth and do what Jesus did and shout out from a loud voice and turn your life over to God.